This is the original wire harness for my 99 Jeep Wrangler. I am making this Jeep all electric and in this video I want to give you an overview about how we are redesigning the entire wiring system and how we set up the vehicle control system based on CAN so all the new electric components are talking to each other again. Welcome back everybody! If you have followed this project from the beginning, and yes we created a playlist and we're up to episode 10, then you know that we're doing quite a drastic EV conversion here. After removing the engine, the gas tank, the transmission, we actually gathered the entire Jeep up to a point where it almost feels like we're building an EV from scratch. We now have all the high voltage component, the electric motor and the inverter, which I can't show you right now they're in the shop and already in the Jeep we have the batteries you can see one module here and check out this video if you want to see how we build this we know what we want to do with the thermal management we have some electric water pumps here for that we have the battery management system or the onboard charger that converts the AC power coming from the wall into DC power for the batteries or also charges the 12 volt battery now the next big step for us is setting up all the common communication between those components. When I turn the key in my Soon Electric Jeep, I need the system to know that it needs to turn on the low voltage system by closing the contactor. When I press this button here, I need the system to know that I want to turn on the high voltage battery pack because I'm ready to drive. So the pre-charge resistor and then the main high voltage contactors get closed. So there's a couple user interfacing functions that need to be controlled. But there is also lots of communication that needs to happen automatically in the vehicle. Like when I want to charge my Jeep in the future, the system needs to know that I want to activate the cooling system, so I want to activate this electrical pump here in order to cool those batteries so they don't get too hot during charging. All those signals need to be available to the right components at the right time. So how do we do that? How do we make all these components talk to each other? One of the automotive industry standards to ensure a safe and efficient operation is the CAN communication. CAN stands for Controller Area Network. It's it's basically two twisted wires that connect all your components. It's a CAN bus, communication via CAN, connection via bus. Especially for electric cars and modern cars where we have more and more electric components, it's very handy because we really have lots of data that needs to be transferred, lots of signal and lots of messaging. When you look back into history, that was very different. You had mainly direct wiring and you probably had one ECU, that's the engine control unit. That's also the case for our 99G Wrangler. You can find the entire wiring system online and you you will find that it is mostly discrete wiring and a little bit of CAN communication. For an EV conversion, I see two main options to kind of handle the new wiring. The first option is you try to reuse the existing wiring and you try to make the new components talk to the old ones. You will need to understand all the details, you will need to do reverse engineering of the entire communication protocol and this can be challenging. For example, when you remove the engine but you still want to use the ECU, so the engine control unit. You might run into a situation where you have a module that looks to communicate with the engine, but the engine is gone. So you would need to find a way to trick your ECU, and some people are doing that. We will try to investigate that for a future Jeep conversion, but for the first one, we are going with the second option. Second option that I see for vehicle communication when you convert a gas-powered car to electric is making the whole vehicle communication from scratch. This is what we do for this first conversion. And I will show you that you can do super, super cool and fancy things once you start getting into this. The heart of our Jeep conversion is the VCU, the Vehicle Control Unit. We pick the one by AEM. This is a VCU 300. Why did we go with this one? We met AEM at a conference and we knew that they were working together with Cascadia Motion. And this is the company that we got the inverter, the electric motor and the onboard charger from. They also offer their own battery management system and power distribution unit, keypads and displays. So overall, we were just very confident that the communication of all these 
aftermarket components would work in the end. On top of that, this VCU comes with a software called AMCAL. So it's programmable even by people that are not super experienced programmers. What you can see here is kind of the basic and the minimum requirements to connect the VCU to the computer and do some basic investigation of the connection and kind of explore the calibration software. So let's power this on. That's our switch. So this is the CAN to USB adapter that you need to enable this communication. Oh, it would be good if you plug in the USB cable. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that looks good. So this is also once you have your all your pins and all the devices that you have connected, you have this of course in your car, but then you can still communicate through the laptop and change some calibrations or whatsoever. When you want to design your CAN network, you first have to make a list of all the components that need to communicate with each other. You will need to go into the instruction and setup manuals of all your components, and no, that's not all of them. And you will need to understand communication speeds, fixed or programmable termination resistance, and you will have to match those all. Then you can start making a scheme like that. And I really have to thank Scott and John from AEM who helped a lot in getting this CAN communication scheme ready. That's our current version. The final one might look a little bit different, but stay tuned for that. Let's come back to our VCU 300. The VCU 300 has three CAN communication lines. The CAN line one makes the connection from the VCU to the computer to the AEM calibration software with a CAN to USB adapter. And then there are two more CAN lines, CAN 2 and CAN 3, that control all the electrical components. Both these CAN lines consist of CAN high and CAN low, and we will then cut this and make connections to the individual devices wherever they are in the car. Some of those components have internal physical terminations, others have not. So it takes some time to figure out where everything goes. And of course, the order of these components also depends on where those devices are in your vehicle. Overall, what you want to do in general is minimize the branch lengths. And like I said, this is a preview now and things might change as we go, but let's walk through this a little bit. We start out with can line three, which is the left part of the schematics here. Can line three has, first of all, the keypad. Like we mentioned several times already, we will turn on the car with this keypad. We'll go into park, into reverse, as well as into neutral. We will also have certain driving modes available, for example, for off-roading, and you can really customize all those buttons. You can make fancy colors. I'm really looking forward to that part. The next device is the battery management system, the BMS. The battery management system that we got is also by AEM. The way it works is that you have a mass module which is part of the CAN communication and then you have several satellites. Each satellite can measure up to 18 cell voltages. So in our case, every module will have one satellite. I've just posted a video about how we make the battery modules and how we connect the BMS to it last week. And there will be more videos about the battery management system because it really is a very, very important part in this conversion. What is the battery management system actually doing? It controls the battery so it will not be overcharged or over discharged and it's not getting too hot or too cold. So it keeps the battery in its comfortable temperature and voltage range. Together with the VCU, you can then also activate passive cell balancing. You can calculate the state of charge based on voltage, current and temperature, and you can manage the entire charging process. The PDU, no, 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 no. Okay. The next component in CAN line three is the onboard charger. We talked about that already. We have it right here. Another very important part in the CAN line three is a current sensor. In our case, Isabellenhütte. This is how we measure the battery pack current. CAN line three will probably also connect to the stock gauge cluster and finally to a customizable display. This will be a very, very fun part of that conversion. We are right now customizing all these signals here so it makes more sense for an electric vehicle. And we're also starting to play around with different displays. So for example, if you go rock crawling and off-roading, you can have a different display and probably you wanna see a couple different parameters. 
than when you're just doing city or highway driving. Basically, you will have access to every signal that is transmitted throughout the entire CAN network. So glad that somebody else figured this out already. Thank you for that. Okay, last little portion of our CAN network. Stay with me. We're talking about this right side of our CAN communication scheme. That's CAN line two. There will be two of those PDUs in the scan line. PDU stands for power distribution unit. This is how the VCU can turn on higher power devices such as the high voltage contactors or the electrical water pumps. In CAN line three, we also have the inverter that of course controls the electrical motor. And then it also ends with the display. I hope this video was useful for you. It took me quite a long time to get familiar with these things. I am not an expert in CAN communication, but I hope I could give you a first overview about what we are planning to do with our electric Jeep. And like I said, I'll cover all the details, how we're actually setting up all those CAN lines in future videos. Our approach is of course, first to hook up the VCU with the calibration software and get familiar with it. Check. Then as a first thing that we want to do is connect the VCU with one BMS master module that is already attached to the battery module and kind of investigate the cell voltages, try out to charge this module, see how the cell balancing works and get familiar with the battery management system. And then over time we will include more and more components, but we will try to stay in this kind of test bed environment as long as we can. We really want to make sure that everything is connected the right way before we really test all that in the real Jeep. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't hesitate to share this video with your friends if you think they might find this information helpful as well. Bye! The heart of the Jeep communication system is the VCU, the vehicle control system. No, <laughs> you're not.